Hey, all right. Um. seeing everybody doing their Rapture Dream videos and World War III videos and different stuff, so I, I got a couple of them myself lately. They're just dreams like I've never had before, so seeing as I'm, I've been seeing everybody have, is having them too. Share mine and do my part. So, uh, I guess I'll start with I've had two dreams. And the first one was a rapture dream. The second one, about two weeks later, which was uh, not last night, but the night before, um, was a, some sort of war. Start with the rapture dream, I guess. Uh, so, in the dream, I, I was in my house, in my kitchen area, I believe, and I had, like, th there was something that happened. Something, like, there was an obvious change in the atmosphere of some kind. Outside, or at least I did. I remember walking outside in this dream, and the part of my, it was at my house where where I walked out. My house was not the same. It was like the front of my house was different, or the side of my house anyway, where I walked out because there was these. It's almost like I walked through a, like a flower garden or something like that, where my driveway would have been, and I had to walk down these steps step out onto the street and there was just uh, I don't know maybe a somewhere between middle-aged to elderly looking woman walking down my street and as I was walking down these stairs to get down to the street and look um, she came up to me and she asked me have you heard what's going on and I said no, what do you mean? She said, have you heard what the kids are hearing? And I don't know why she would say that. Because around my house, there's only two kids, and they're 15 and 12. So, I, uh, I didn't really know what she meant. And, uh, so... As she's saying that, have you heard what the kids are hearing? I said no, and I started listening. I remember I like consciously started trying to listen in the dream for a sound or what? What like what are they hearing? And I live in like an oil town, so there's constantly noise from a oil plant that's a couple miles, like a mile down the road or or so, two miles or something. And you can hear the constant noise of the oil plant and I live close to some train tracks that are pretty popular in my town so I, uh, there's always noise going on so I didn't think really anything of it when she said the have you heard what the kids are hearing and whatever so I think I, when I listened I had heard just the normal stuff the train and the plant noise cars going by and things like that and then and then I heard like the most thundering uh, wow as I'm making this video somebody is liking my comment that I left on Crystal's uh, YouTube channel that's funny 
So, uh, I heard this noise, and I don't know if anybody else has seen the videos online of, uh, on YouTube I've seen them, of, there's, somebody's just filming on their phone or whatever, of, uh, maybe they're out in the woods, or I've seen videos of people in Israel, Jerusalem, different places, they're filming a video of this, sounds like a tuba or something you know like this loud deep like and I mean thundering like noise of, like just like a tr the trumpet that you would think in the Bible the angels blowing the, the trumpets the shofars and uh, so that's immediately when I heard that I knew what it was so began to absolutely run as fast as I could to like the main street that I live on and I remembered I need to look up and see what's going on in the sky that's that was my thought originally in my head so I look up and there he is Jesus was in the clouds and I've I've known Jesus my whole life. I've had a relationship with him, known about him, felt the presence of angels and and demons in my life in different places. But uh, so I, I, I'm aware of uh, the feeling of a spiritual encounter, I guess you could say, in the physical. I've you know, not just in dreams, but. Um, up and I guess the way I could describe it was um, if you can picture the Michelin man the Michelin tire man the big puffy white Michelin tire man if you could imagine just how you can see his like the outline of his fingers and stuff and his hands but it the the way I saw Jesus in the clouds was not like I've heard a lot of people say he has his arms down and I've heard people say he has his arms straight out like this. But this one that I saw, his arms were straight up like this. Like out, kind of out to the side, but they were up like this. And uh, it wasn't like I saw the face and the coloring and the everything. It was like just a, like an outline made of clouds. And that there was like, you could see right through it. It was just blue skies in the middle. Right, but you could see that just the outline of his body, you know. And so, when I saw that, I, I'm from what I can remember, I'm pretty sure I just was like, "Oh my gosh, you're here! Thank you!" I, I, you know, all happy and stuff. But uh, when I looked up, I looked up like this and I was looking up so far that some you know somebody could have been standing right in front of me and I wouldn't have seen him because I was looking up so much and when I looked up and I look I looked down and Jesus was standing right in front of me and the only way I could describe the way he looked to me and I know different people have said he looks different and, and has a different uh, look to them than I saw, but the, the Jesus that I saw in my dream was, uh, he looked if it just exactly like the, that there was a, a movie series or a TV series or something of the, it was called The Bible. And I know The Chosen has come out recently and that guy has, Jonathan Rumi has a much different look than the, than the guy from the Bible series. And, uh, but anyway, the Jesus that I saw looked like the guy from the Bible that played Jesus. And, um, he was standing right in front of me. And I said, Oh my gosh, Jesus, you're here. I, I can't believe I'm seeing you right now. This is amazing. And, 
everything and I think more people begin to crowd around me and then uh, I got the idea just the classic idea to go up to Jesus and ask him if I'm gonna make it into heaven am I am I gonna go to heaven Jesus I asked him and he told me no and I remember when he, when he said no, he just like went right past me. He walked right past me like quick. And then the felt like, oh, and when I saw him in the clouds at the very first, I remember I shot up, but I came back down. And I shot up like above the tree level or something so that I guess in the dream it felt like just so I knew that I was going up. It, like I, and I could recognize it, I guess, because I got so high, it was like, whoa, you know. And but anyway, uh, I asked him, and then I came back down, and I I asked him, "Am I going to go to heaven, Jesus? Am I going to make it to heaven?" And he said, he just kind of shook his head no, and he said no, like very real sternly, kinda. And um, the next scene that I remember seeing was um, we were my mom and Jesus and maybe some of my other family that my immediate family that I live with were sitting on the porch on our little deck I guess and there was like a chair a chair and then two more chairs and that it was exactly how we have it set up on my porch and everything I remember my mom was sitting in the first chair. Jesus was sitting on her left. And then there might have been somebody, some other family sitting in the chairs beside him and everything. And I remember I was begging Jesus to know why that I wasn't going to make it into heaven. And here recently, uh, in the past few months, I've been having some pretty spiritual experiences having to do with my music and uh, let's just say there's a plan in place because of uh, some things that have happened here recently with me and Jesus okay so I got some music coming coming out pretty soon that's hopefully everybody's gonna be able to get behind and hopefully it's what Jesus wants because told me to do it and I, I started so we've come to that part of the dream where I'm sitting on the porch and I remember I was down on my knees begging Jesus saying and it was almost kind of like in, in the dream I, I remember thinking but I haven't even gotten to do my music for you yet Jesus I haven't even gotten to sing for you yet you know and he just like abruptly came and I wasn't ready I guess I remember being down on my knees on my porch in front of mom and dad and Jesus and everybody, I believe. And I was saying, please, Jesus, I'll, I'll sing like nobody's ever sang for you before. And I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do anything you want me to do. Right. And, but he was sitting there and he's kind of looking at me like, just almost like, uh, I don't know. And uh, he was talking to my mom. He was talking to my mom about something. I can't remember any conversation or anything like that. The only thing I rem remember is him telling me no. So that was about it with the rapture dream. And I'll try to make this one quick, but I had a dream of a war. And uh, I guess it the setting looked like I was in Jerusalem or something like that and over in the Middle East and I remember we were running to the middle of this city that almost looked like a courtyard or like almost like a, if you could I mean I, I haven't watched too many videos on Jerusalem and seen what it really looks like here recently but if you could imagine those those huge walls that they built 
and I think it would have been in Herod's time that he built it. Those huge stone blocks that they would have been stacking and creating the wall, you know, um, around the, like the west wall or the east wall or the whatever, you know, I, I, I can't, I'm not, you know, savvy enough with it, but like 12 year old kid looked like to me and he was uh, he was hiding behind one of those blocks and he had a homemade sniper rifle and he was trying to defend himself and he looked like he would have been a Jewish kid in the dream just from what I can remember and I, I, I was hiding behind one of those blocks too, but he was out kind of like down these, like a couple, two, three steps or something. And there was one of those blocks sitting in the middle of the courtyard or but what, that's the only way I can see, like explain it. it. It was just this big square deal like this. And across the way, um, I knew that the people that we were fighting against were Arab. We were on the Christian side or the Jesus side, however you want to say it. And um, he was using a homemade sniper rifle made out of like pipe, like metal piping. And at first when I seen it, I, I thought, oh great, he has a sniper rifle. I was always a, a sniper kid when I was playing the video games when I was younger. and. So immediately I gravitated towards that because it was the first thing I seen too. But um, I said, hey, can I use that? I have a better spot or something like that. And I might be able to get to him, right? And so he threw it to me. And when he threw it, this big, huge, long thing, the only type of rifle that was like homemade out of pipe like that that I've ever seen I believe is like Ukrainian or Russian or something like that and it's to shoot like a not normal sized sniper rifle round so it, and it, it's like it, it has some name to it I forget what it is but it, it was like this homemade basically a pipe sniper rifle and he threw it to me and when he threw it, he took it like this and he pushed it so that the pipe was standing straight up when it came to me. And I remember the barrel bounced across the ground like that. And when I, when I got it in my hands, I looked at it and I, I remember thinking, man, if we're fighting with this, we're not going to be getting nowhere. You know, this thing's going to explode in my hands. And I, I threw it down on the ground and next thing I remember... I was still there and I looked across this courtyard and I saw um, these Arab guys and there was, I can't remember how many there were, but there was like five or six of them, a good handful of fully grown men that could probably throw a baseball pretty far and they grabbed grenades, I saw them all grab grenades off of their, their chest like this and they pulled the pin and they threw them and these grenades just started hurling over towards our area and I knew in the dream that if I didn't get up and start running they were gonna land right at our feet and they were gonna explode right when they got to us and we were gonna die so immediately I just took off running I didn't know what else to do so I just took off running and I remember there was about 30 feet between me and this wall that I had to get around to be safe and I was thinking, I'm gonna take a leap of faith and Jesus, please protect me while I'm running to this wall. That's all I could think about. And so I ran and I made it. And I, I can remember when I was sitting there behind the block and looking at the guys and looking around and trying to like assess the situation, I can remember the feeling of like being shot in my legs and in my side. different places all over my body but the bullets were bouncing off of me you know I don't know how to describe it but anyway um, I ran around this wall 
and I just kept on running and it looked like I was running through Jerusalem or something like that, like old town, old town Jerusalem, the old city, the old city or I'm not sure how they say it, but, um, I was running and then I remember it almost looked like if you, if you've ever seen the pictures of like Nazi concentration camps, how they have like a double fence and between the fences, the guards are able to walk through and like keep watch on everybody. That's what it looked like. It looked like it was a concentration camp of some kind that we were in, but it was like Jerusalem was it, you know? So I got to, I ran and I was running across like some grass field or something. And I remember it was starting to get dark and I got to these fences and I was looking behind me and I could hear the bombs going off and it was going like every, it was just crazy scary, you know? And I was look, I looked up at the top of these fences and there was razor wire on them. So I was thinking, I'm not going to climb over these because what if I get cut up or hung up on that and I can't get over it and that's it for me. So I was thinking of another way and I looked at the bottom of the fence and I realized that the bottom of the chain link fence didn't have like the thick piece of metal that keeps the fence from like totally bending up. If somebody wanted to just pull the fence up, they could if it didn't have that and it didn't have it. So I pulled the fence up and I slid under it and I got between the two fences. I looked back again, pulled up the second one and I had to run maybe 30 feet or something in, in the dream from what I can remember. It, it looked like about 30 feet. Uh, I had to run until there was like this tree line of forest or something. And when I like almost before I got there, I knew what I was supposed to do when I got there because the, the hill was like, you, you weren't going to make it down it without falling or something like that. And I remember I was running, 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 and I remember I just jumped. And when I jumped in the air, all of a sudden there was just, I just looked down and there was this perfect, like, if you've ever been on a water slide at a, a, a water park or anything like that, and how the slides just are doing that, that's what it looked like. But I remember thinking, okay, there's this dirt slide and it's covered in leaves. So I'm going to be like, I'm going to be able to just land on my butt and slide down this thing. And I did. And I, like, while I was sliding, I was thinking, okay, this is a dream. I realized it was a dream and this is God showing me he's getting me out of here. making me feel better anyway. But uh, I remember I slid down that, and I'm from California originally. I live in Oklahoma now, but I'm from California, and I've been to all the big cities and stuff. So I remember I slid down this hill, and when I got to the bottom of it, I landed on like a, like a city sidewalk that was nice. Like in California, some of them are the, the newer sidewalks. They're just a big, fat, tall curb with the cracks all put in them and everything. And I landed on this sidewalk and I looked around and I looked up and I was in, it looked like Los Angeles. And uh, so I started running down this sidewalk and then the just the next, in a flash, I was running through this like uh, storage unit kind of facility with a bunch of C trains, those big, huge containers that you see on back semis or you know, something like that size, and they were all on the ground. And I remember it was weird because I was running up to one of them. I, I was running between them, and at the end of this one, the doors were open. And when I got to the end of it, I looked to the right, and there was a guitar sitting in a guitar stand. And I looked to my left, and there was these two... Uh, people that I follow on Instagram, I, I'm not, I, I won't say their names, I guess. Uh, they both are pretty famous in the music world, and one of them's a guy, one of them's a girl, one's from Australia, and one's from like somewhere in the south, the United States, and uh, they pulled up, and I remember I recognized them right away. He was riding a Harley and she was on the back of it. And uh, we just ended up talking about, 
I don't even remember really actually the the, the conversation was so quick and I I just remember her the girl smiling and I recognized her from her smile and we ended up being in a house and the conversation was something along the lines of everything's gonna be okay and then and a split second later I blink and there I can hear the Harley boom boom starting up and they're going down the street and I'm looking out this window watching them kind of ride away and the wind blowing in their hair and just this feeling of like peace and I don't know what that had to do with anything but that was my dreams that I've had and I guess I'm gonna try to play something for you now um, I guess I'll try to play Red Haired Boy it's a fiddle tune I play a lot of bluegrass music so Let's check this out, see if I can do it. I haven't played anything besides what you just seen me play in the beginning of this video, so wish me luck. <laughs> That's a short bit of it. Thank you. See ya.